turbo. We've got a big day planned, so we're gonna make a big breakfast. We've got some moose sausage going. This is sweet moose sausage. And Errol just put some biscuits in. We got some gravy going on the wood stove, so we're having biscuits and gravy. We're also on our second cup of coffee, but we're gonna show you guys how we make our coffee real quick using our French press. We use a 34 ounce French press and we do three large tablespoons of ground coffee. In goes our hot water. We've been making coffee with a French press for almost four years now. We absolutely love it. We're going to get a nice, strong cup of coffee out of this. Put our top on and we're going to wait four minutes and we're going to give it a stir. Now we have to wait eight minutes and our cup of coffee will be done. A little cream and sugar, but we're ready to go. How many do you want? Two or three biscuits? Three? Uh, two, but I like them split in half. Oh. oh I like this. You sure you don't want two more? Okay, fine. <laughs> That'll leave us three for later. Egg. Do you want any more gravy in that? A little more? Maybe a little more. That one's mine? Yes. I know it's quite pretty. Huh? A little more gravy in that, yeah. I don't like a lot of gravy. Okay. It's coffee. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't even drink it. It's too hot. It's really good. It's one of the best cup of coffees I've ever made. It's super hot. Oh, that's really good. Puerto Rican coffee. That's good coffee, as it is, yeah. Mm. It's hot. I love that sweet sausage. Well, we gave the onions, leeks, and shallots a little bit of a haircut this morning. Our seeds are off to a really good start. Those look great, the herbs look great, and the flowers look great, and we are moving on to 
peppers I have postponed this just a little bit they tend to get too big too fast inside so I wanted to start them a little bit later than usual if you're wondering why I trim our onions that's just a habit I practice for indoor seed starting if you were starting onions outside you definitely don't need to do that these guys just don't get that much light so they do get a little bit leggy and put a lot of their energy into their leaves and when you trim them what happens is they push that energy back down into their roots and the the bulb of the onion so to speak as far as peppers go, we are going to be planting a lot of what we usually grow, which is the serranos, jalapenos, and banana peppers. But we also have lots of really cool, fun, spicy, hot varieties that some of you have sent us. And I'm, I'm kind of trying to like branch out on our peppers. Peppers do pretty well here in our high tunnel, but the hot ones, we usually don't have a warm enough or long enough summer for those ones to work. Along with the peppers, we also started some eggplants for the year. And because these seeds like warm temperatures, I prefer to use a little seedling heat mat. This goes underneath the seed tray. And then I also use in combination a little plastic lid that you put on top. And what that does is it keeps the seeds a lot warmer. Usually the soil gets about 10 degrees warmer with the heat mat, and then it gets even warmer with this clear top and really moist in there. So it stays like the perfect germinating temperature in my opinion. Our house stays pretty warm with our wood stove, but I find when I use this that I usually have very high germination for our peppers. These are gonna be going on the top of our rack because it is warmer up there. that one uh okay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these pieces are huge. I'm actually going to start stacking some on the other side because that's going to get... I just don't think it's all going to fit right there, huh? Do you want so. me to put it on this, on top of these blocks? Sure. Okay. 
I'm just not going to make that much more so. Spruce burnt twice as long. I mean, I know that's it. what I was saying. That went through way quick this morning. They were like gone in like 30 minutes. Yeah, it was like getting, three pieces. This would be at the point where it's almost unusable, so it's just not burning as much at all. throw it up you want it to be like one motion I can feel it when it's really heavy and I don't get it I've only gotten it like three times nice well before I was just trying to move you too much you know what I mean now I know how to do it I not good at it but I know how to do it now well you gotta focus on I was trying to get the swing like the way you did it Are you hearing much? This right here? No, when I say it was my ears were burning. I don't think so. Probably is, honestly. Think about it. Really? Yeah, I think so too. We've had this little contraption here. It's called a, I think it's called a kindling cracker. It's for cutting kindling. We've had it for like a year and a half and I used it right when I got it. And I was kind of like, eh, I don't really like it very much. I kind of prefer using a hatchet for splitting kindling. And when you're splitting kindling, what you're after in a piece of wood that you want to split is something with no knots. So something really nice like that is going to split just really easy with a hatchet. But as you pick through your logs and you start running out of good pieces for kindling, you kind of end up with pieces like this, stuff that's really hard to split with a little hatchet. And that's where I pulled this thing out again and it's been working really good. So you don't really need a piece with no knots. You can use a piece like this with knots in it. Still get kindling out of it. Let's see if it works. It's too big. Let's get it out of there.
Today we're going to be pulling off some of the siding on our cabin. Actually, probably just one or two pieces, but we're doing that because as spring came and the snow started to melt on our roof, we noticed a small leak where our chimney pipe comes out of our roof. We're gonna have to fix that, but first we're gonna pull off the panels, see if there's any damage. And also we have another big project coming up this spring where we're gonna be redoing all the siding on our cabin and painting it. So we're gonna see if we can pull it off and see what's behind it. Well, we got the panel partially pulled off and we we're able to look behind it. I had to cut a couple nails to get back there, but everything actually looks pretty good. It's extremely dry. I think because our cabin stays so dry because of the wood stove and it's a dry climate here, moisture is really not that big of an issue. So we got it put back up. I got nails in it. And as soon as the snow melts off the roof all the way, we'll be able to get up there and fix the chimney leak and we should be good to go. There's a little bearing in the front, sometimes you gotta get a new one. Okay, so we're getting there. I know there's two bolts on the bottom, we gotta get to it. Yeah, they give you a lot of room when they do that, huh? <laughs> that's the axle? That back one, yeah, that's the back axle. It needs to be replaced, huh? <laughs> no, look, you see my weld job. I'm just looking at the axle. Why, because it has a little surface rust on it? Oh, it's going to be super nice to have a spare one of those in the future. But yeah, they... They're back ordered, apparently. They should be good. Looks like it. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, so there's the... There's the belts. Okay. There you go. Good job. Good job, everybody. I'm thinking we are done with the snowblower for the season, but we're not done with working on it. You notice that this belt right here, which is the drive belt, when you hit the forward or reverse, this engages and it'll uh, make the snowblower go forward or backwards. This belt was just about ready to snap. So we went and bought a new belt for that. And since you have to take the whole thing apart, we bought a new belt for the auger and this one engages the actual auger. So we got the whole front of this thing off. We're ready to put two new belts on. We'll get her put back together and she'll be ready for next season. Yeah, this one's just toast. So this is the belt that I knew needed to be replaced. It is just shredded. It's a little thicker right there. You get a spot like this, completely thinned out. Oh yeah, you can see all the metal. This one was about to go. Where'd the rubber go? What's that? Did you break the rubber off? Or no, that's, that was completely trash. That was, Brother got a new collar. That was bad. Are you trying to find it? Inside? Yeah, yeah pick it up inside. And then this. I gotta put it in there. Go spare. up a little higher, maybe? Or? Oh, yeah, you're spinning it. That's good. Okay, she's on. Oh, you okay?
Well, when we flipped it upside down, we messed it up. <laughs> so I think it's called hydro locked, I'm pretty sure. And what we need to do, basically what's happening is it won't, this pull starter won't pull. So I think, I think all we need to do is pull the spark plug out, pull it once, and it should shoot a bunch of gas. It's either gas or air in there, but something's, something's preventing it from pulling. So I gotta pull the spark plug out real quick. We'll see if we can fix that. We got rusty. Look how old that is. Old, smells like gas. Watch yourself, let's see if it'll pull now. Oh yeah, look at that. That was pure gas that just came out. <laughs> I think it was just flooded, flipping it over, and uh, the gas was running into the carburetor. We flooded it, but we got her going. She's actually sounding really good. The auger's engaging perfectly. The drive is working good, so the snow blower is ready to go for next year. And I think we're pretty much done with snow removal. I'm hoping. So we're gonna get the Polaris out. And we're gonna pull the plow off her. Eric and I are slowly but surely getting ready for spring. I think it is, it's among us now. So hopefully we can get that siding project done in the next few weeks. And thank you for tuning in.